this show is called Nightlight. It is um, sort of a play on how we use public space at night and accessibility to it. Um, when we were looking for, and and then within that, um, working with different artists who like to engage the public in different, I don't know, sort of interactive ways to play around and discover different nooks and crannies here. So making a sort of safe and comfortable environment for people to explore at night, which is not always the case. And so there are works all throughout that are pretty pretty electronic uh, art-based, um, and it's all solar-powered as well. So that sort of one of the, it wasn't intentionally all solar-powered at first, sort of we found this amazing space that we wanted to work with and then realized there was nowhere you could plug anything in and then had to teach ourselves how to work with solar power. Um, and it's kind of great because then we could literally just pick everything up and move it somewhere else. And that's an exciting way to think about making artwork outside in the future. So, so there is another piece um, from then, what? Then, then, then Piper, <laughs> and he set up this uh, like local network for this garden, and it's called Occupy. Here, so people can log into. So, as if like people are logging into Wi-Fi, you, people can log into that um, that network, and then there it would turn up. They will see this uh, message board, and then they people can just leave a message there, and then we made this um, algorithm called Strawberry algorithm. <laughs> um, so we count the numbers, um, the 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 numbers of the word. Oh, hang on, not the numbers, of the, the length of the like of each word. Yeah, how many letters in each word? Yeah, and also. Uh, how many vowels in this one word, and how many consonants in this uh, in this word, and then and then it turns into music. So the number of like the number of consonants decides whether it's gonna be a chord or it's gonna be a um, ascending or descending notes and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Effectively, we wanted to try and make this message board, use it like this Occupy Here message board, in t into like a libretto for this music that we were writing. Um, and we created the algorithm to be able to translate each word into an ev individual like chord or like uh, like ascending. Sometimes we've thrown like a, a what are those things called outside block parties. I had a, we had a block party and I just put them out in a little baby pool instead of water and water toys. I had these fabric masks and things that people could wear and sort of walk around and be a moving piece of artwork that's creature but also you're just hiding yourself but you're also like making yourself louder visually louder for people to see which is like fun Are you changing your identity? um i'm just i'm not changing i think either you're bringing something out or you're putting someone else's uh part of someone else's identity on um sometimes yeah during like for special events install them in a certain way like in a laundry line i think that would that works really well outdoors 
and indoors in like a plain gallery. Um, and so you're sort of putting, when you put it on, you're like taking off your clean laundry, uh, which we don't really do anymore, have laundry lines outside. And then you're when you're done, you put it, hang it back up to dry, and then someone else comes along and puts on the costume piece. It's like you're sharing uh, skins. <laughs> Flex is a about to be 20 year old arts collective. <laughs> Our birthday is August 1st, and we've gone through so many transformations. It started. Um, it started as just a group of kids who are philosophy students who wanted to create a space where non-commercial art could be, non-commercial art and philosophy and writing and any type of art that people wanted to delve into and share and experiment with, to have a comfortable space that was just open for that. Um, so those eight people are now Half of them are members of our board, which is really cool. <laughs> and um, so from there, from this sort of informal living collective, we transitioned into a nonprofit organization, um, which meant we needed a board, which meant we started hiring staff. Um, and then from there has turned more from writing heavy into a visual arts-based program, but we still we call ourselves a group of cultural producers. Anyone, you don't have to identify as an artist or a musician or anything. You can really just, as long as you are creating things for people to engage with in a manner that the current members of Flux find to be productive and exciting and enlightening, um, then that's sort of how it continues to work. The current members of the collective choose the next ones, um, and that keeps it so that we have this legacy based sort of no one no one lives there unfortunately um but it is it's a very all encompassing place you we have 24 hour studio access so there are people that are working there all throughout the night sometimes and we have a kitchen there's all sorts of things but no no one lives there interesting and i was kind of shocked that how people oh, so many people are working together and you know, doing collaborations and all these things, I was really um, amazed by it, and I really wanted to be part of it. Yeah, and I'm still here. I actually got involved with Silent Barn through Nat Rowe, um, so that's a funny thing. I was working at the New Museum at the time as a security guard, and Nat, I met, he was a docent or tour guide, something like that. Um, so that's how I got involved, actually, through Silent Barn, by meeting Nat, who's now the director at Flux, which is really cool. And Nat and I used to actually work at the Museum of Natural History together also. Uh, digitizing uh, plant bugs, plant bug collection in the entomology department. Uh, yeah like counting little bugs and entering their information into a data. This is Mark. He's the director of the garden. Yeah. This garden is the original reuse, repurpose, recycle garden. So it's nice to say we're recycling solar, solar energy. <laughs> So what's up tonight? Just yeah. Oh, just talking? It's a nice place to talk. I feel the oxygen level is up in this garden. How long have you worked in this garden? Uh, 12 years. Recycling, reusing, <laughs> repurposing. <laughs> the floor is from a pharmacy on uh, Vernon Boulevard that was demolished years ago. And these are from PS1 MoMA, the holding patterns of 20, 2012, I think it was, or 2011, whatever. But most of what you see in here is recycled material. Even the plants are 
someone else's garbage. So we are we are happy to make beautiful things out of garbage in this garden. <laughs> no. The squirrels enjoy those ping pong balls with delight. <laughs> like that day when I came in here and the squirrel held a held a ball like four feet away from me and said, Come and get me and went like this <laughs> and just stayed there. And I said, you little sucker. And he did not move. It was so funny. <laughs> but it, it, jo- it brought a lot of joy to friends, neighbors. People came from Harlem. Remember that night when we were here? From all over the city they came to enjoy this very beautiful and interactive uh, 